Welcome, folks, to my combat channel news. And when I say my, I mean yours, really. I'm the Ackman Ryan Ackman. Right. I'm Fabiano Uija, the king of the armbar. Catch up. He's being nice right now. This arm has been in far worse places on other episodes. Go to mycombatchannel.com. You can see him doing all different techniques, all, all different, different yeah. angles that I'm catch runs on. There we I, go. And I have no health insurance here, too. I just have an arm in danger at all times. But we move on, nonetheless, to our show tonight. Great show. We're going to be talking about the next season of The Ultimate Fighter. We have uh, an absurd thing happening in MMA, a unique angle to the sport. Uh, an evolution or a revolution? Yes. Either the sport's going that way or somebody's or trying to put it that way. Or it's going, going or, backwards. <laughs> that's a de-evolution. That's even, yeah. That's and a, that be the case. we got a special guest tonight, yes. Rob Razor McCullough. Yes, one of the best. WEC, WEC WEC champion. Former lightweight WEC champion, one of the best strikers in the yep. game for a long time. Uh, a very talented fighter, great guy, and he is fighting a different battle outside the cage uh, in a second endeavor that we really uh, completely commend him on. Really great thing to see. We're going to talk, definitely talk about it. Anyway, John Jones against Shell Summon on the Ultimate Fighter. That's wow. going to be a war of trash talking. Yeah, that is, th that is going to be like the Huffington Post on crack. It's going to be unbelievable how much back and forth is going to happen between those guys coaching. There's going to be some pushing and shoving on that season, will there not? Oh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun because Shell so already proved that he's a very funny guy. Yeah. And he can talk. I don't know if John Jones can handle the, the, at least the talk. Yeah. He yeah. definitely can handle the fight. Yeah, he can yeah. handle the fight. But and, uh, he'll be able to handle the talk, depression. You know, yeah. it's going to be like, you know, when you give a smart guy at the microphone, you know what happened? Yeah. It's Mark. I don't want to say the word because I want to be peep, but you know, it's Mark. Uh-huh. Got it? I mean, uh, an alec of smartness, you're saying? Yes. Yes. Chelsea has a sharp tongue, to say the least. Very witty guy, very smart guy. Knows the hype of the game like nobody's business. Uh, he'll be pushing John Jones' buttons, and the less Jones is cool with it, the more he'll probably do it. Yeah. But more like, the game. yeah, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know in that situation, what is the worst? <laughs> Get upset? <laughs> yeah. Or, or just chill out and just play the game? Yeah, know? I don't know which one is the worst. Let it out in, the, the, in yeah. the cage later on. Originally, uh, looking at Donald Cowboy Cerrone, Anthony Showtime, Pettis' mm -hmm. as coaches, uh, Cerrone was almost sure they were going to have it. And then, boom, Sonnen and um, Forrest uh, Griffin right. was supposed to fight on the, in, on the UFC 155 in December. In December, and that gets and, pulled. And then they get pulled off, of course, because they don't want to risk it. Right. They can do it. And he probably going to be shooting at that time anyway. Right. That's the shooting time. So anyway, uh, that's going to be fun to watch, but it's not fun what odds on that fight it is right now. If you're Chael Sonnen. 600 <laughs> against yeah, he's Shonen. He's a six to one underdog. You're getting the odds and the numbers. I, I tell you what, the odds still going, maybe even going higher. Yeah. You know, I, it's definitely I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get some, money. you know, go over my uh, my savings and put <laughs> some money on that. Crack the piggy bank yeah. and put it on Chelsea. Yeah. And then they'll be like, John Jones made a mistake. Please made a mistake. Made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be make throwing some stuff kind on the TV. Some kind of mistake. But we talked about this before too. Uh, Chael Sonnen is a guy you not to sleep on. He can pull off the upset. He definitely he can. He won't be the it's favorite. Like, if somebody have the pool, like look what he almost did for Anderson Silva. Yeah, he whooped okay? up for five In rounds. my opinion, if he was not too cocky, okay, he could have won that fight. Unanimous okay? decision. He just lost, he lost. He simply lost his mind, okay? Yeah. Anyway. From one John. To another John. John Fitch. He, um... He may give the appearance to fight fans who are going to be following in the MMA media yeah. that he is a fan of one Carlos Condit. And you know why? However. Do you know why? He's a fan of Condit the same way uh, uh, a hitman is a fan to a mafia boss. Yeah. He's looking for him to take St. Pierre out and get a shot. Exactly. The idea is, okay, if uh, Carlos Condit, he beat George St. Pierre on the upcoming UFC, uh, John is gonna be facing him next. And that's probably not gonna happen the other way around. That's mean, if George St. Pierre beat uh, Carlos Condit, he does, get a shot. he's not gonna get a shot. Why do you think that is? Um, ask uh, Joe Silva. Ask Joe Silva. 
It's yeah. an interesting thing because if it's if he's a legit contender for the title, you would think he would be entitled to that shot, regardless of what. who has the strap. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, maybe St. Pierre's the, the star power. You know, even if he loses to Condit, so he'll get the shot with Fitch. Mm -hmm. But I mean, St. Pierre lost to Sarah before, and he still didn't have the marquee value that that St. Pierre has. He is, for all intents and purposes, the star. If I wear a, a glasses right now. Uh, matchmaker glasses, uh, special glasses. And you can. Special vision. You okay? can. Go ahead. I say that John Fit and Carlos Condit is definitely amazing, a better fight than uh, George St. Pierre. It'd be a more exciting Than St. Pierre? Exciting fight. And Fitch? Yeah. In my opinion. Okay. And that's maybe, you know, they also their opinion in that case. So. What about Condit and St. Pierre? How good could that fight potentially be? Or do you think the same thing's gonna cancel things out and it might be boring? Uh, I'm, I think it's gonna be a little bit boring. I can see that in your yeah. eyes. Why do you think? I think it's gonna be. But it's like, uh, the, the, the GSP is gonna play, play careful like crazy because yeah. he's been out for a little while. He's not, you know, he's not warming up yet. So. Yeah. Well, Condit's gonna push the pace on him. Yeah. But we're gonna push right now ourselves we're push a little bit to, to. to where? To a we push for the commercial. Yeah, we'll be we right gotta back. push for it. But yeah. we're gonna be back with more some oddities and with. Don't go anywhere. Today's a good show. Razor Rob McCullough is here. Yes. Welcome, Welcome back, back, folks. My Combat Channel News. Now we're gonna go. Um, Backwards. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna de-evolve the sport, kind of yes. going from upright man to man dragging knuckles. Yeah, we're going to time. almost almost to Olympic sport down to uh, freak show. Going to jail. Going you know, to maybe. jail. Maybe going arrest by illegal uh, show. Right. Oh, we've joked that people. It, say it is illegal anyway. That's why they're doing that show on the in, on the Indian reservation. Right. Okay, that's let's a great bring that point up. To bring okay. up. Yes. That show that we're gonna talk about means. They, this organization trying to bring four fighters at the same time inside the ring. Okay, right. it's not very clear how they're gonna fight against each other, how they're gonna do it, but they, it's gonna be four fighters at the same time inside the ring. Not, not completely as WWE as it might sound. It's not four guys and the last one standing wins. It's it's two against two. It's like like why with that? The, the stars. video of WWE yeah, they have like what twenty? It's, it's not quite that. Not quite that. But not it's that like crazy. it's two against two. It's like brawling with the stars. And yeah, basically it's what they're team. gonna do. Remember, it's, it's not team. it's not like they they all gonna fight against each other. No, it's two on the same team against two. But, but they don't the tag time. in and out. No, they're all no, no. The they're on the same time in the ring, and that fight is gonna happen on the in the reservation because it's not uh, right. a commission uh, uh, show. It's definitely not a commission show. It's never gonna be. Now, they, they're gonna have two against two. In the event somebody gets tapped or KO'd or TKO'd, I think there's two officials in there as well. They remove that person. They take a minute. They stop the action. They remove the injured or tapped out person. Then the round commences and continues. There's no limit to how many rounds they can have. Now, this is a Chance Farrar, who I believe is uh, affiliated with the WEC. The WEC on the back here in the East. They, The only thing they don't specify in the article at all, or anything you can find on this thing, is that when you have one guy out, and you have the two against two, then it's two against Maybe one two now, is, is it going to be like one guy going for an ankle lock, and the other guy's going for like an holding? anaconda yeah. at the same time? Like, I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be a bizarre, but maybe fun to watch. Uh, it else? could be. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing to see how that may or may not work out. If it's a, a new way to reinvent the sport, or if it's just you know a desperate attempt to try to find a new appeal. Going to a crazy thing to a real. Let's talk about real match that maybe happen next year in January. Uh, Heavyweight match against Daniel Cormier, hoping, hoping that Frank Mir will be able to fight him in early 2013. They were supposed to fight this year. Injury for Mir sidelines the fight. Cormier left without opponent. Now on the docket to fight in 2013 early on, but the opponent not yet secure. And of course, again, wants it to be Mir. If Mir is healthy, he's the guy. If not, what do they do? They probably bring somebody else. But again, guys, come here. It, it is undefeated. It's 10 and 0 on strike, fighting for strike first. And of course, UFC got the eyes on him. They Which, may be going to bring death match into the UFC. Yep. And if that happens, of course, it's not going to be for the belt that is coming here hold right on sure. strike first. Okay, so what's going to happen? We're not sure, but hopefully Frank Mir can get you know himself together right. like and be back in January and that fight's going to happen either in strike first 
or in the UFC. Right. You look at you look at Cormier and you go, all right, he's 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 good. He's undefeated, very strong and, and durable opponent. Uh, you you see Mir, more well-rounded, more experienced, mm -hmm. former champion W, you know, in the UFC rather. Uh, but you look at the record of Cormier. He's taken down Bigfoot Silva. He's taken down Josh Barnett. This could just be, you know, another I, I tell top you level what, fight I that tell he you wins. What, these guys, they are heavyweight, but I'm very interested to find out the top 10 light heavyweight. Bring it on. You're going to dial it down a little bit. I'm Aaron right. Gales, and this is the top 10 light heavyweight. Number 10 is Antonio Rogero Noguera. And number 9 is Quentin Jackson. And number eight, we have Ryan Bader. Number seven is Alexander Gustafson. Number six, we have Phil Davis. Number five, we have Loyoto Machida. And at number four, we have Mauricio Puas. And at number three, we have Rashad Evans. Two, Dan Henderson. And at number one, we have John Bones Jones. Thank you for watching. I am Erin Gales, and that was your top 10 light heavyweight. An excellent top ten countdown. She does there that ten go. through one thing like nobody's business. Very fast. Very so smooth. we're gonna cut this segment a little bit short because we have something coming up that you're gonna want to see. Don't go anywhere. We got nice interview with Rob Razor McCullough, and he's here and he's be right there. We're gonna squeeze a chair. Excuse me. Welcome back, folks. My Combat Channel News. Take it, fam. I take it. I take. It. I, uh, as I promise, I promise you guys, we deliver it. Well, I promise that we're gonna bring Razor Macaulay, one of the best 155 pounds on the planet. How about that? Just because it's two old friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's because he means it and because he's in striking range. <laughs> Look that former WEC lightweight yeah. champion. It's not too many people can hold that tire. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. I, you don't see that behind my name. No. I had KFC champion sometimes, but I've been <laughs> on to knock off a bucket or two. Um, so yeah, so I mean, you mentioned WEC, I was no longer in existence anymore, was Zufa as they folded that vertical into their own thing. When that happened, having so much history and having people say that they often put on better cards than UFC did, did you see that as a positive, a negative, or just kind of indifferent, like it didn't matter? Nah, it was, it was, uh, it was sad to see it go, you know, I, I, I fought in number two of the, the show. Oh. I was a champion of the division. So, yeah, but I mean, it, and the, then again, it was, you know, because people go, oh, it's different, the different caliber guys. No. When you watch the WC guys, Benson Henderson, for example, he, you know, he was a champion of the WC, now he's a champion of the UFC. Oh. The caliber of guys, the cage was actually smaller in WEC, so I mean, you got a little bit more, more mm -hmm. action. There wasn't so much moving around. No. So, I, you know. Yeah, you did 12 fights on WC. You should have owned some uh, shareholder there. Yeah, you had some stock in the company. Yeah. Stock in Hopefully the company. when they sold out, you, you cashed in. Ah, uh, you know, it, it helped me uh, It helped me build build a, a career outside of the cage. That's so. old team punishment pictures right there. I see Chuck yeah, Liddell, uh -huh. Rico Rodriguez, Tiro Ortiz, yeah. Rob, myself, uh, Mark Kerr, and uh, Tony... Tony, Tony D'Souza. D'Souza, D'Souza yeah. And what else I see? Wow. That's it. That was like the team that used to hang out together and try and make things happen. 
Yep, we did. We, we did. did. We didn't try. We did. We did. We, did. we definitely made history at that time. For did, sure. th did that version of you two guys ever think that the sport of MMA would be where it is now? Those guys, not these guys. Those no, I we like I like we used to have a hope for hope. sure. Hope. Yeah, hope. Hope that get there, and did and get you know, way better than we fought. But I, anyway. it, and I would say that it's people like you guys who helped get it there, not yeah. just through hope, but I mean, your fights, you guys were doing it before there was t-shirts and yeah. it was a fad and, yeah. you know. It so. was always interesting to try to explain to a, a girl you're dating at the time, exactly. now, that I'm, now that I'm married, but when, yeah. you're, when, you're, when you're dating a chick and they ask, you know, their parents ask, oh, you know, how do you, what do you do for a living? <laughs> oh, well, I, oh, is it like WWF? No, it's actually, it's real, it's in a cage. It was like karate? No. Yeah. I'm just a personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to get worse than that. I used to get the same direction because again, I've been there a little, you know, a little little before you. And I used to get that, uh, oh, so you guys fight like a dog on the cage. <laughs> wow. So exactly. And they start to say, no, I'm just a jiu-jitsu instructor. They start to change. Yeah. Because easy way today. Yeah. Anyway, interesting story. I was nice to bring it on. You know, me and Rob, again, as the beginning of the sport, I came from Brazil. I was very good in the ground, jiu-jitsu guy, black belt in jiu-jitsu. We used to be a partner training, we used to help each other. He's amazing, one of the best, in my opinion, was one of the best Muay Thai, best stand-up on the whole team punishment. I was like, no down that. In that time, I used to be the best ground work on the team. That's why I was there, that's why he was there. So we just kind of help each other. And then end up that one day, we almost, end up being lined up to fight against each other, each other on the WFA. Well, Fighting Alliance, Jeremy Lappin, who exactly. now runs the California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts yeah. Organization, the CAMO. CAMO. Uh, that was his organization. He had Quentin Rampage Jackson on WFA as well. Yeah. So, and, and I wanted to ask you this, because you brought this up once before. Like, we hear stuff now, like, you know, Big Nog won't fight Junior Dos Santos, mm -hmm. same team. You know, there's, at one point, Jones and Evans wouldn't fight, same team. You guys were close, you helped each other out, you taught them ground, you taught them stand up. And then when the time came to sign the dotted line, because you're making a living, you signed the dotted line. I, What's I did. different now? I did, and like I, I, for me, not, nothing changed. I think that I think it's you the same. We, we I, I'm used to fight professional. I used to fight for the money. You know, that's why I used to make a living. That's why I used to bring you know food to my table, and that's the way it is. I don't care who was in front of me. You know, if like in that time, my brother. If I have a brother, I have a brother actually. My brother is a fighter, and I have line up to fight him. I'd be like, okay. Bring in the family. Same okay. for you. Well, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, you, when you train with the guys, day in, day out, you bleed together. You know, you sweat together. <clears throat> you become a brotherhood. I think your training camp. So yeah, typically they don't want you guys to fight each other. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's two two guys that are gonna get, get locked in there, and it's as, as gentlemen as you want to be. It's still guys who want to get paid. Right. Yeah, and, and we're talking a lot about what's on the inside of the cage and being locked in the cage. But you're doing a lot of stuff, some of which I think is really noble stuff to do. And I think people like you mm -hmm. doing what you're doing are putting a better spin on mixed martial arts and martial artists overall by doing stuff like that outside the cage. Tell us about your uh, your stuff involved with anti-bullying and everything else. I got I got involved with the anti-bullying campaign uh, through LA Boxing, which is the company I work for now. It's a franchise corporation. They, you know, all over the, the nation with gyms. And, uh, and I actually started there. I started there as a kid at 16 years old, which got me peaked in, in doing mixed martial arts and, and, and Muay Thai kickboxing at first. And you know, the story was, everybody at works calls it the kick story. I started there, the instructor told me, hey, you have a good kick. At 16 years old, I was like, I'm gonna be world champ one day. And I never looked back. So to me, that was a day that I kind of went in there and it gave me set little goals. And I, and I knew, hey, if school wasn't the thing for me and I didn't work out and I be, didn't become a doctor, I might become a professional athlete. So I got in there, I got to do that stuff. and I. I was thinking about it, you know, you, you watch TV and you got all these celebrities telling you about anti-bullying and stuff like that. And it's a very big epidemic now. It's different than when we were kids because there's cyberbullying. You know, we before you and I, we would go to school and then during the summer we could get away from bullies and, and spend time with the family and maybe change schools. Yeah. But now they don't have that because now now kids are getting on online and bullying each other. So it's year round, in your face, 24 seven. So it's kind of bad, so you feel bad for kids. and. Uh, so I started thinking about it, I go, hey, you know, the one thing you can do is being a mixed martial artist, I think, you know, you're at the top of the game. You know, guys who think they might be tough are looking up to these guys going, yeah, these guys are tough, you know, they probably bully people. Nah, we don't, we're, you yeah, know, we're, we're competitors. Right yeah. We do this, we do this because we, we're, this is a sport, just like basketball, just like golf. So the, at the end of the day, it's kind of flipping the script on people, bullies, and saying, hey, we're not, you know, we're competitors, but we fight for many reasons, but never to be a bully.
Where can people find out about what you're doing in those efforts and join you, support you, whatever? Let, let them know. Holyfight.com. That's our website. Um, you know, I've been doing assemblies for, for high schools. I've been doing assemblies for, for kindergartners, third graders around Orange County. Uh, it's, it's gone national now. We'll be doing some news here in New York soon, uh, CBS on the couch. Doing some stuff for CNN at the end of the month for the Huntington Beach High School. There's 3,000 students. So it's a cool effort. You know, we've got a lot of big name guys that are still current active UFC fighters, including Dana White, the president, who's backed it and uh, who's experienced his own stuff with his kids. You know, so it's, it's something that I don't want to look forward to as having my own child as someone, you know, picking on my kid. Because people are like, oh, you know, you're worried about your kid being a fighter. You know, is that what you want? No, I want my kid to be a nerd. And I start thinking about it and I go, God, well, what if someone picked on my kid? I wouldn't want him to get beat up. <laughs> so all of a sudden it really started to hit home for me. So I was like, you know, this is, if I can make it, if I can pay it forward per se, then that's something I'd love to do and be able to be a part of it with all my friends. Just tell your kid to tell people they call my dad Razor. Yeah. And tell them to check you out. It'll anyway. a lot of stuff off right Bob, there. Bob, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, for and sure. Thank you, guys. Yes, and, and commend you highly on, on, on your efforts to do that stuff. Again, I think that makes the sport and martial arts look way better. Um, that don't know hold, hold hard thing is get squashed by that. Yeah. I think. Yeah, totally. So we thank you for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Again. Once again, close it up, Bob. Have a good night.